welcome, I'm Jana, and this is Pearl Together. And in this week's technique video, I'm gonna show you how I like to do the super stretchy bind off, um, particularly helpful for maybe hats that are knitted from the top down, definitely socks that are knitted from the toe up, uh, maybe even fingerless mitts, anything that you need a stretchy bind off for, this is fantastic. A lot of times I will use Elizabeth Zimmerman's sewn bind off, and that's probably a, the second stretchiest bind off that I like. This one is slightly more stretchy than that. So um, I have uh, on my socks, particularly that I've knitted from the toe up, I have a larger instep and therefore I have a, a longer heel diagonal. So my socks require that so that I can, you know, get that over my heel. Before we get to that, we're going to have a little update on Peanut. As many of you know, he broke his leg about five weeks ago. He's doing fine. He still has his little cast. See his little cast? He doesn't really want to show you. He likes to sit on me like this, which is fine. But he's doing good. He had x-rays at four weeks. And he has, it's just a hard plastic splint that the vet has wrapped. And he's doing fine. Um, he's annoyed about it, but he's been so good. He's been so very good. Like he doesn't make a mess. He like lunges himself and picks up his leg and hurls it over the side of the litter box. He does really well. Um, but yeah, he's ready to be done. So when he had x-rays at four weeks, they said his, his bone is filling in and it's healing, but it needed a couple more weeks. So we'll have another appointment this coming week and we'll see where he's at. Um, yeah, he's doing fine. But I did not ask them to make this purple, but I'm glad they did. So Peanut is somewhat annoyed and he just wants a lot of lovies and attention, but he's doing okay. So thanks for asking and being concerned about that. Okay, I do have some other um, work in progress updates. Let me gently put him down so he can go have a net. He likes to be under my desk. So I'm making pretty good progress. I have done, I don't know, probably 20 squares since I last showed you my blankie. Um, a shout out to Lori, who is one of my patrons, and she sent me some scraps. Thank you so much. This is a scrap from Lori. This is from Lori also. And there's another one on here. This is also from Lori. Um, and then I have another person who is Mary. I won't reveal last names, but she, thank you so much. She sent me Oh, probably little, let's see. She sent me some little yarn bits like that. They were definitely five to seven grams each. And here's the one I made so far using the ones that she sent me. So I'm excited. My blanket's moving along. I know it's going to take, like I mentioned earlier in a previous podcast, it's going to take like 1,500 of these little squares. So every little bit helps. And I definitely appreciate people that are contributing to my blankie and I'm knitting you a square. If you contribute to my blankie and you send me enough yarn, at least five grams, I'll even, I'll knit a big square. So Lori did that actually. She's, she has little teeny feet. And so she had a whole bunch of leftover and I'm going to make a couple of big squares with the leftovers that she sent me. So that's fantastic. This is a new square since last you saw the blanket. I've knitted a bunch on it. So I'm trying to do a tiny square each day. And it'll probably take me about two years to finish my blankie, but it is king size. So for those of you that didn't watch the previous podcast about our Freedom Whips, where I talk about my blanket, I'll put the link to that down below. Um, we're doing a Freedom Whip knit along, meaning free your works in progress that have been hibernating since 2008. <laughs> That's when I started this blankie. So I'm doing it. And it'll take me about two years to complete 1,500 squares in my king size blanket. So it is the width that needs to be. I'm just knitting up. So if you want to contribute your sock yarn scraps or learn to do this yourself, details are in the previous podcast. Again, I'll link that down below in the video description here. The other thing is I want to give a shout out to eight new patrons. Oh my gosh, thanks for joining me over at patreon.com. That's been a lot of fun. I have eight new people to publicly thank for joining the Pearl Together patron family. So I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you, much gratitude to Carol, Kathy, Tina, Diane, Julie, Lisa, Lori, and Sandy. Thanks for joining me over at patreon.com forward slash pearl together. This is where you can make a small monthly pledge and I offer 
perks for doing that discounts on events patron only net nights things like that so thank you so much for joining me over there that's what keeps these videos coming to you each and every week um occasionally i miss a week if we're super busy on the farm or i'm traveling but we're per we're relatively consistent so thank you so much for doing that so let's cut over to this week's technique video all right i'm ready to bind off the top of my sock i've knitted this crazy green green fish lips kiss heel toe up sock and so now it's time to do a stretchy bind off so i don't uh negate all the work i've done to make my stretchy ribbing so on my customizable toe up video i believe i use the elizabeth zimmerman sewn bind off which is super handy and i really like it however it can um, be a little more tight if you're not super careful with your tension. So what we're going to do this time is just a simple stretchy bind off, which I also like because it's easy to do it in pattern. And so that kind of keeps the continuity of the ribbing. So I do like that. So we're just going to go in and knit this first stitch like normal. And then the second stitch we're going to knit like normal as well. And you want to, you know, make sure things aren't tight. You just want to be relaxed in your normal knitting tension. But then we're going to go in, take your left needle in. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see. So after we've knit those two stitches normally, you're going to take your left needle in underneath at the base of your stitches and bring it back up like this so that you are knitting through the back loop. of. So we're going to knit those two together through the back loop. All right, and then I usually draw up a little bit extra here. I just, you know, not a lot, but I just don't want it to be tight. Then our next stitch is a purl. So we're going to yarn forward because it's a purl. So we're going to go ahead and purl that because that's what it is. Then I think I split a stitch there. There we go. Okay, purl. And then after that, because that's a purl stitch, we want to purl these two together. So my yarn is forward and I'm going to take my left needle in underneath like we did before, but instead of going like this, like we're gonna knit, we're gonna take that needle to the back so that your right hand needle is in the front and you're set up to purl. Yarn is forward and we're gonna purl those together. Okay, now your next stitch is also a purl, so we're gonna do the same thing and purl that. And then take your left needle in underneath both of those stitches and have your right hand needle in the front because we're purling. And go ahead and purl those two together. There you go. Now we're going to take our yarn to the back because the next stitch is a knit. So we're going to knit that one and then we're going to knit these two together through the back loop. So I take my left needle tip into the base of those stitches and bring that to the front because that's knitting. We're going to knit those through the back loop. Being careful not to split a stitch. Do the same thing. Knit the next one. Take your left needle in at the base keeping that to the front and knit those through the back loop. Whoops, missed it. There we go. Knit those through the back loop, being sure to keep things nice and relaxed. So you can see how that's turning out pretty well, and you can see that it's in pattern, which I do appreciate. Again, bring that forward because the next stitch is purl. So purl that as normal. Left needle in underneath at the base and to the back so that the right hand needle is in the front and we're purling. Purl those two together. Same thing. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on like that until we get through uh, the half of the stitches and I get to the end of my magic loop here and then we'll check the stretch. So any bind off can become tight if you're not careful about your tension. So just be mindful, be mindful of the tension. Okay carry on doing what we're doing here purling and knitting through the back loop knit knit through the back loop that's a little bit tight so i'm going to you know loosen pull pull up a little bit more of that loop and mitigate that purl and put my left needle underneath so i can purl those together you get the idea. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off, this half, and then we'll see what things are looking like. All right, I've just done the first half of my stretchy bind off, and I think that some of this messiness will block out, but I do like that it is very, very stretchy. So 
Um, yeah, some of this is going to block out. Some of it is just the nature of the beast when you have pearls in pattern on this side. Um, and admittedly, there is a little bit of flare. So I can, you know, work on my own tension. Um, but I do like how stretchy it is. So that's the main point is that I have a high instep and a big heel diagonal. So I'm pretty confident this is going to go over my foot just fine. But I will uh, finish this other half and then I'll show you how to finish this off when you're doing it in the round. Okay, I've gotten both sides done and admittedly there is some flare. Um, and that's probably can be mitigated by my own tension and being a little more mindful of that. However, I do like that it's in pattern. Um, I also like that it's very stretchy. So let me show you though how, at this point, if you're unsure about it, before you go ahead and, and finish this off, go ahead and try it on. I've just pulled up this last loop so I can go ahead and try this on without cutting this. Um, because that way, if, if I need to alter the tension or choose a different bind off, I have that opportunity. I think this is going to work great, um, but now is the time. Okay, I tried it on. It works just great. Uh, very stretchy, no problem at all going over my heel, my instep, my diagonal, any of that. So I have this big loop here. So what I'm going to do is shorten that up just a little bit. But before... Um, before I draw through the, the end that I've cut and tighten that off, what I like to do is take my darning needle and I'm going to go ahead and put it, put it through this next stitch right here, right under the top of that chain edge. And I'm actually going to take the loop and draw that through rather than putting the tail in just yet. I'm going to take the loop here and pull the loop through. That is going to draw down the, you know, how we knit in a spiral and you can have that jog at the end. That's going to pull that down so it's more even with the beginning. I'm going to take the, my tail here and I should have had my tail on the other end. So I'm going to, on the other side. So you want to have your tail on the inside. So I'm just going to uh, find out where that is and then pull it through. So now you can see where I've drawn the loop through with my darning needle and I have my tail on the inside of the cuff as well. So now I'm going to just simply put the tail through the loop and cinch that, cinch that right on up. So what that's done is draw this closer to this so I have less of a jog at the end. And now I can, I've, I've drawn that up tight and cinched it. So now I'm going to take this and weave it in. I'm just going to weave in my ends down. I'll probably in and out a little bit here and then go down one of these ribbing rows to secure the end. So I'll do that. But that is the simple stretchy bind off, which I think is a fantastic way to end my sock. So I hope you found that helpful. This has become my kind of go-to stretchy bind off, like I mentioned, for hats and mitts and toe-up socks, maybe even the collar on a, a bottom up sweater, you know, the neckline where it needs to fit over your head. So it's a good technique to have in your knitting toolbox for a number of different applications. Okay, have a good week and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.